everybody, we're going to be making him sit. We're going to be making igneous rocks today. We're going to be making scoria and obsidian. To make those rocks, we have to have adult supervision because we need a heat source. I am going to be using a candle with an open flame and a tea light candle metal base. I took the candle out because I don't need that unless I need to stick it in here to have a new wick, but I don't because this candle works. Other things that we need to have is we need to have tongs or tweezers so we can grab that hot metal because in order to make scoria, we're going to be pouring the liquid from here directly into that cold water fast. Okay. Now, to make obsidian, we are going to use a spoon to take the metal, pour it into the spoon, not the metal, pour the liquid crayon into the spoon and slowly submerge it into the water. That will make obsidian rock. Igneous can be made by heat and pressure or just really hot heat like lava. Lava and magma are different because magma is under the earth's surface. Lava is when it comes out of the earth's surface. Okay. If you, igneous rocks are not only obsidian and scoria. Another name for scoria, by the way, is lava rock. You can remember it by that. And another igneous rock is granite. Granite can be made by taking your sediments, heating them up. But in this case, it is not going to be an exact representation of what granite is actually like because granite is under the Earth's crust in the mantle. And it is heated by a pocket of magma over here that is giving off heat. And the rock around it that's surrounding it is stuck together in that mantle layer. It can't move anywhere, so it builds up pressure. When it builds up that pressure, there's nowhere for it to go. So it chemically bonds together. And that's how you get things like granite. And that's also why it's multiple colors where when we have lava, it's pretty much all the same color. It's one color. So for our scoria and obsidian, we are going to be using black crayon and a red crayon because black crayon is going to use for our obsidian. The reason why, again, is because obsidian is black glass. That is what it looks like in real life, so we want to replicate that. My crayon is already turned into scoria because I, I had a little bit of a couple mistakes making the videos. So I'm just going to remelt this because it's perfectly fine because it's still crayon wax. So I'm just going to put it back into the wax container. We are going to do obsidian first, and then we will do scoria. Again, make sure you have ice cold water. You need adult supervision. You also need a lighter if you're using the candle method. And I use toothpicks, but they are away from the wick to make a stand for my candle to sit on. And I made sure that it was level. Now, if I was to poke holes, it is possible that my crayon will leak through if there's not enough pressure around those toothpicks. So I am not going to poke holes, I'm just gonna have it setting on top of it. And I also don't want my crayon sitting up like that. So I am going to stick it back in by breaking it back into pieces. You should only need about one jumbo crayon or typical normal crayon for each rock.
Okay, now that I have resituated myself, I am going to go ahead and light my candle. I want to make sure that I'm not lighting those toothpicks up like birthday candles because that is not their intention. Their intention is to be a stand. I am going to place my metal on here. And that's the last time I'm going to touch that metal because metal is a conductor. It will conduct heat and the crayon will be liquid, which means it is also very hot. So again, adult supervision is needed. Make sure not to touch the metal or the liquid crayon. All right, I am going to tip the computer so you can see what's going on with the crayon itself over it. And then when it is ready and it's fully liquid, I will tip you back over so that way you can watch me put it into the spoon and then into the water slowly to make obsidian. Okay. We are watching. We see the crayon is starting to melt, which is good news. I also hear some of that water that absorbed into the rock bubbling out and evaporating. Okay, we're making some good progress here. You can see the crayon wax is bubbling along the sides, which is a good sign. You just need to wait for that mass in the middle to melt down. Remember, igneous rocks are chemically bonded together. You cannot find any open space because they are chemically bonded together, which means there is no air in them unless it's a pocket of air bubble. Like in the instance of lava rock, there is not two rocks that have an air bubble in between them. It's now one rock with air bubbles. We are so close. I can still see crayon solid on the top. So we are not quite there yet. It's slowly getting shorter and shorter. I don't know if you can see that. I moved it over a little bit because the bubbles from the water from my mistake was making it move. You should not have that issue because you're starting from a fresh crayon. All right, it is now liquid enough that I have 
a few seconds before it's fully liquid to put down the computer and return you back to our original view. Okay, and then I'm gonna scoot this back so you can see the desk. Our cold bowl of ice water. We're not yet quite to a full liquid, but we are so close. I do want it to be fully liquid. I want to make sure that when I am putting it into the spoon, I get as much as possible, as flat as possible. Okay. It is now time for me to pour it into my spoon. And slowly submerge it into water. I'm going to let it sit there for a second. I want to make sure that it's really cool off. And when it's really cool, it should just fall off and float in, which is good because I still have a lot of liquid left. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour myself another rock. Slowly submerge it. Let it fall off, pour myself another rock, slowly submerge it, and it fell off. Now, remember how it's working in real life is the lava is flowing down the volcano, and it flows into an ocean. So when it's flowing into that ocean, it is slowly getting in that water, and that's how that obsidian or black glass is formed. Okay, it's now time for us to make our scoria. We're just gonna leave the obsidian there for right now. Notice how I have not touched the metal because it will still be hot. I actually don't need the spoon anymore. We're gonna pour it directly into that water. This is where I'm gonna use the red crayon and I still have some of that black crayon wax in there. So that's gonna help us with what we are making, which is now scoria, which is lava rock. Now lava rock comes out of the volcano and it goes on land. When it's going on land, it's constantly cooling because of the air surrounding it. So that means it's forming air bubbles. And that's why you see so many bubbles in the lava rock that you see on people's landscapes. That rock normally is real lava rock. All right, I have put my whole red crayon in there. Now we're just waiting for that to melt again. Flip you over just for a second. You can see full crayon. You don't want to be able to see a full crayon. It needs to be fully liquid because it is lava.
It's melting a lot slower because this crayon is more dense, which you should have observed with your obsidian because you were using a full crayon and not a remake of crayon. Getting closer. That was cool. Did you see that red that just swirled around in the black? I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of that as the top finally melts away. Look, I'm right. Kind of looks like a ladybug. So close. Almost there. This would be relaxing if I wasn't holding a laptop up in the air. All right, once that liquid falls in around that middle piece of crayon that's sticking in, I'm going to set the laptop down. And by then, the crayon in the middle should be fully submerged. Almost there. All right, we're looking pretty good here that by the time I reset up the laptop, that crayon will be submerged and fully liquid. I'm gonna push my laptop back more because it can splatter a little bit, but the splatter typically cools off by the time it's gone through the air. So as far as safety, if you would like to stand arm's length back, that is the best safe possible. And if you would like to wear safety goggles, you can wear safety goggles. All right, we are ready now. I'm gonna make sure to pick it up. And it is very important here that we pour it in as fast as possible. We do not want a slow pour, we want a jump pour, okay? Three, two, one.
Okay, now I need to blow out my candle because we cannot have an open flame while we're not paying attention to it. I am not gonna set this down on my table right now. I'm gonna put it actually in the water just to cool off for a second because I don't want it to ruin my table. So now that I've cooled it off, it can go on the table and we can observe. Okay, so there you have it. We have our scoria. Now, I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna try and take it out and hold my laptop up at the same time. See how this goes. And we're just gonna flip it over. Oh, see how that's really thin? I can't see the screen, so hopefully you can. Pretty darn cool, huh? Now this is a small version of Scoria. If we were to have a lot more crayons, our Scoria would look a little different. It would have more of a solid mass instead of all being the bubbles. But because we used one crayon and a little bit of black crayon, that's how we got our cool little structure here. And that's exactly how it goes in the real world. So here's our scoria slash lava rock. Compared to obsidian. See how the obsidian is flat, shiny. When you break it, it breaks into sharp pieces which is why it's referred to as a glass. Look at that piece. When you break lava rock, it's not sharp, it just crumbles, but it is still in lava rock form. It's still scoria because it is chemically bonded that way. The only way to get it into a metamorphic or sedimentary form is for it to break down from erosion and weathering and turn itself via heat and pressure or just pressure from sedimentary rock and combine itself into be a new rock. All right, so I'm gonna take them out of There, I wanna make sure that I get as much crayon out of this as possible because I do not want any of this crayon going down the sink. So, I can either use a strainer, I could hold a po paper towel over it, or I can sit here with a spoon and grab these all out but I need to make sure that I am not sticking any crayon down the sink because crayon does not belong in the sink. It does not belong with our water and it could possibly ruin your garbage disposal if you put it in there because it's coating it with crayon wax. You don't wanna do that. You want those blades to be nice and sharp. So make sure that you strain this, clean it out. Uh, you could even dump it outside. It's crayon. It's just gonna melt on top of rocks or whatever you dump it in, so no big deal there. And we need to make sure that we clean up our area as this is the last video of the Cran Rock Cycle. Make sure that you do your predictions and drawings and answer the questions. Remember that if you are in high school, you need to be more detailed than the details expected from a middle schooler and be more scientific about it. How is this relative to real life? How is this scoria different from real lava rock slash scoria? How is it the same? How did the processes we went through 
mimic what happens in real life, but how is it also different? All of those things. All right, so I'm gonna clean up my mess. You should clean up your mess. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next videos.